Welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. My name is Ron Ecker. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys had a chance uh, to watch some of the games uh, over the weekend. Uh, just some great games both in the NBA and in uh, college. Uh, hard fought NBA games uh, and hard fought college games even though they were mostly, uh, all of them were in their tournaments um, and uh, uh, fighting for that uh, that top spot even though two or three of them would still get in the NCAA tournament but they wanted to win uh, that championship and in do in watching especially in the college uh, games I, I was taken by a couple of players in the uh, in those games that were shot blockers uh, that it, it, yeah, I have a, a, a great uh, feeling for shot blocking. Uh, I, I really uh, think it makes a difference uh, in your defense. Um, but uh, what most people say to me is, well, I just don't have a shot blocker. Uh, well, I think they do. I think you all do have a shot blocker. Uh, he may uh, have a different name, um, but uh, my point is this, and it's something that I worked very hard at as a coach, but it was very effective for me. I wanted a team of shot blockers, and, you, and this is a mental thing. Uh, you don't think you can block shots, especially if you're a small guard. But your guards can block shots uh, if you work with them. And working with them is primarily uh, showing them that they can do it. Or if they don't do it, they can, it, trying, they can make a difference uh, uh, in the shooting uh, percentage. But the biggest problem you have is that they just don't try. The other problem you have is that, uh, as I see, a lot of uh, coaching going on with taking charges. Uh, I, I think that's a futile uh, or a last uh, resort type of uh, effective defense. Uh, for one thing, the offense is going to get about 80% of those calls. The, the rules are such that it's almost impossible to be as set as they demand, uh, especially in the NBA outside of that little circle, uh, and get there in time uh, to be that set. Uh, so most of the calls go against. And, you know, I saw the, saw these guys uh, taking charges and uh, the, the offensive man gets, a, a lot of times, gets the basket and a free throw or two uh, free throws and they're both limping around afterwards and people getting hurt. Uh, I just think uh, there's a better way. And when you're coming from the weak side, like most coaches could teach in ro rotation on a driver, you, you don't have much of a chance uh, to get there in time to get uh, a charge. You, you need to go for the block shot. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the First of all, the effectiveness of the block shot. Uh, and then secondly, I want to show you a drill that you're, you can get your whole team uh, thinking about blocking shots. So uh, please go with me to the board now. I want to show you first of all uh, the effectiveness of uh, shot blocking. And it may be... Um, that uh, it seems a little minuscule to you, but it has a, a, an effect uh, on, on the game. Uh, let's assume uh, that you're taking 60 shots in a game. Uh, for now, let's leave the, uh, let's uh, uh, think of these as two-point uh, uh, attempts. Um, because there's very little shot blocking on a, on a three-point uh, attempt. 
Now, if you're a pretty good shot blocking team, uh, you will probably be around 6% of the shots uh, that your opponents take that <coughs> you block. Well, 6% of 60 is just four block shots. That's all. Uh, but what, what happens is when you block a shot, you take a, it's like a turnover to me uh, because uh, you take away uh, the fact it doesn't even get to the rim. Uh, and generally, uh, you get the rebound or the deflection uh, from a, a shot block. <coughs> but in order to shoot 50%, which a good team should be able to do and that you need to keep them from doing, uh, they would have to make 30 baskets of these 60 shots. Well, when you block four of them, they only have 56 uh, um, uh, attempts left to get that 30 baskets. That would take you, uh, you know, I'm going to walk you through this so you'll see it. Uh, in order for you to get 30 baskets out of 56, you'd have to shoot 44, 54% on twos. That's uh, asking a lot of a team. Very few teams shoot 54%. Maybe in a game or so, they will end up doing that one game. But over the season, uh, if you can make them that they have to shoot 54%, uh, to get the same amount of baskets, if you didn't block any shots at 50%, you, you, your defense is going to be much stronger. But let's look at it a different way. Let's keep them at 50%. Now, you're only going to give them 56 real attempts. If, at 50%, if you take 50%, that's 28 baskets that they would score. That's two baskets. Uh, that's four points at two points. Uh, that's a big effect. Uh, that's enough for, to win you some games uh, 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 with that kind of a, a differential. Uh, so, it has a dramatic effect, and you might, and if you can creep up to 7% or 8%, or I've seen teams with 10%, head teams with 10%, uh, but you've got to get a lot of people blocking shots. You can't just rely on one guy, uh, and, uh, but it has, a, I mean, your defense is going to be very, very strong, remember, Field goal percentage is the biggest fa factor in winning and losing games. You're affecting it here. Uh, get your players into the frame of mind to block shots. Make them believers that they can do it because they can do it. If they believe they can do it. Uh, that's your job a as a coach. I'm going to show you a simple drill that I've used for years and years and years uh, to make a team better uh, overall. Uh, and that's this drill right here. Um, we've shown it before some time ago, but I just feel we need to show it again uh, because uh, it's important to your defense. Uh, we line up, uh, your whole team is down here. I, everybody is in this drill. <clears throat> we tell them to match up uh, in twos uh, according to their size and, and uh, quickness. But it do, I don't really care if they're, they're mismatched. Uh, it, the idea is we're talking about a mental and physical uh, aspect here. So you line them up, make sure they're outside the lanes. It, 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 this drill works a little better with the pro lanes, but that's because you've got pro players there. Uh, I, I use it a lot in college, and uh, the college lane uh, is okay. i got to take, it, it, this is a drill the coach has got to be <coughs> a part of the drill. Uh, the coach is right here along one of these lane lines because you could, you got to flip it over uh, if you go a different direction and you should show, uh, do it both directions. So you're s sitting here now. Right now, 
the role that I'm going to ask him to do is the key. You can't do it throwing the ball like this. You've got to get down on the floor so you can roll it real nice. And you roll it towards this elbow. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what An ideal roll would be that this guy picks it up just as it's past that elbow. Uh, and then drive, then when he gets it, he picks it up and drives it to the basket. This guy is the guy that goes out and picks it up and drives it to the basket for a layup. This guy on the opposite side of the coach slides, steps across, slides, step up as far as he can until he sees that he has got to go now to get the block shot. He, he may get up in here only, but don't let him sit down here. He's got to go up. Now, on the guy that's picking up the ball, here's a key coaching point. Uh, tell him to circle the ball. They, they have a tendency to try to reach for it from behind and it keeps rolling away from them. It almost stops the drill. Uh, you don't want the ball out here. It's too, it's too far uh, of a drive. You certainly don't want it in here. It's too short uh, of a drive. So the roll is important. This guy goes circles it, picks it up, drives it in for a layup, slide steps across, slide steps up till he makes the decision. You've got to teach him how to make those decisions. He's got to have a chance, a lot of practice, to know how far away he is that he can still get the block. Then he goes for the block shot on the, uh, on the layup. Well, uh, 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 he's, he's, there's one part of it that I need to tell you. First of all, is we teach, and it's very effective, to go across arm, not with this arm on the, on the uh, block. Uh, it would look like you could use your left hand. Go across. The reach is farther, and you'll have less fouls. You come down, you tend to make a swipe at it. When, when I was with Cleveland, I worked with Ilgoskis on this all summer long. I mean, one of the things we worked on, because uh, actually Z at 7 foot 3 was not a good shot blocker. Uh, and he could be, and he did turn out to be a good uh, shot blocker. But he had a tendency, like a lot of players, to come and just swipe down at it uh, and consequently get fouls. Uh, we worked hard on that. Uh, coming across, and it, it uh, made me feel good when I saw a big picture in the paper of him blocking a shot, and he was using his uh, cross arm. In fact, I cut the picture out and sent uh, sent, uh, sent it uh, to him. Um, but um, and the other problem you have here is uh, this guy has to be really taught to take the ball to the basket for the layup. Invariably, they bail out uh, and kind of throw up a little semi-hook shot. Uh, actually, that's as effective probably as a block shot. Uh, they're not going to make a lot of those. Uh, so you've probably done your uh, work. But in this drill, uh, I, I'm, I'm very intense that these players have the courage to drive the ball into the basket and lay it up there strong. Uh, we tell them no dunking in this drill. We would want them to do that in a game, uh, but uh, it, it kind of destroys the effect of uh, shot blocking. Uh, but make them go by, that's another teaching point. Uh, in a game, you'll find that uh, if you don't have players that just demand the getting in that layup uh, and willing to throw their body into it uh, and take a chance of being hit and knocked and everything, but not bailing out, it's part uh, of the teaching. Um, but after you've done it, 
on this side for a while, then move the coach over here. Now everything is just the opposite. He's the guy going to the elbow, and he's the guy going up. Now you have a different arm. You're going to be blocking, uh, in this case, with your left arm. Uh, and it's what you've got to do as a coach. But if you run this, just take this simple drill. Don't try to, uh, uh, to, to make it an enormous thing. Just run it day after day, day after day. I'm not speaking about every day of practice. Uh, I'm talking about consistently doing it throughout the season. And you will find, keep track of your shot blocks, how many you're getting. Uh, you're usually on the, on the, uh, 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 you know, the, the, uh, the uh, play by play sheet at the end of the game. Uh, and uh, keep track of your percentage as it goes along the season. Make sure it's creeping up. You want to get to 6% uh, of their shot attempts. Uh, and uh, then up to 7, 8. You can get up to 10%. You probably will be the best defensive team in your league. Uh, but you need more than one guy. You need a, your team thinking uh, like this. Well, that's it. I just want to remind you there's only 14 days left in the sale to start taking the course. Uh, after that, it gets bumped up in price. So take advantage of it to just, uh, you know, during this period of time. Hope you have a good uh, couple of days uh, watching basketball because it's a great time right now. Thank you and we'll see you next time.